Hello ladies and gents, this is Firefox here with sort of an in-between video. It's taking me a little while to make new kill compilations or Twitch highlights. Uh, I'm very sorry about that, but this video is kind of just me putting it out there really quickly to show you guys how to make money in Tarkov efficiently and to know what to spend your money on, how to use it, and showing you my idea of a proper loot run. Uh, these are called money runs, rat runs, there's a lot of names for them, uh, but this is just a primary run that takes very little effort, uh, very little time, um, no PvP involved on just how to get money. So if you're looking to increase your stash value or get more money in Tarkov, this is the way to do it. So the first thing you think about in any raid is spending. You know, what do I bring in the raid and how much money do I spend on it? Um, usually in money runs, you're not really going to be PvPing a lot. Um, my runny runs uh, seem to just rely on going to not very contested areas. So you don't have to fight for loot, you just get free loot. Uh, this is my idea of a money run. Not that I do very a uh, lot of money runs, but you know, it's just a very efficient method for people who don't want to have to PvP all the time in order to go to Shoreline and get Ledexes. So since we're not going to be running into that many people, we're really just going to think about what can protect us like on the baseline, what can protect us for cheap and protect us against scabs and crappy ammo. Usually you want to go for the 6B3 TM vest. I know probably a million times you've heard people talk about this vest, you know, um, how good it is for the price. And it is a very good vest. It's a rig and uh, armor at the same time. And it's level 4. It's made out of a mediocre material. Um, the real deal breaker with this thing, though, is just the $48,000 price for level 4 when these other vests that are level 4, the 6B13 Assault Armors, are more priced and they don't come with a rig. The only problem with the 6B3 TM, though, is that it's very small. The, sta the space it holds is very small, making it not that great. Because when you're looting, you're going to want to prioritize the amount of space you have. But don't worry, we'll cover that cost with a backpack, a very good backpack. So if you have proper level 4, you can get what's called a raid backpack. It's the biggest backpack in the game, and there are two barter trades for it. The first barter trade are for two military cables, which usually go for around 40k in price. Um, so that would mean that the backpack usually costs around 80k. This could be more or less, and it really depends on when you buy it in the wipe. Uh, but right now, this is like the best barter trade for it. But you also could trade eight level 25 USEC dog tags. If you have just a dog tag case full of dog tags, you don't know what to use it on, you can use it on this. If you do not have proper level 4, however, uh, you can also buy from Ragman a couple good backpacks. And I'm not buying from the flea market because there's a very good reason. So the first one here is Oakley Mechanism Backpack. Sometimes it can go below the trader price, but usually it stays either a little bit higher or around the same price. But uh, you can buy it from the market as well if you want. This is called the Oakley Mechanism Heavy Backpack. Um, this is a backpack that's relatively small in terms of the size on your character's back, so it won't give you away as much as a raid backpack. That's one upside to it. Uh, the 32 space container size is bigger than a tri-zip, um, it's bigger than a beta, bigger than all the standard scav and barucked backpacks. Uh, so it's a pretty good budget option, especially when you want to make more money. Um, if you want to spend an extra dime or so though, you could buy an Attack 2 backpack off the market or a Pilgrim backpack off the market or even a Paranus. Those are all pretty good as well. Um, if you have the barter trade for the Mystery Ranch, you might want to consider doing that. Or if you have any of the other backpacks unlocked from Ragman, you can do that. But the first thing I would always go for, if you have proper level 4, is spend the extra money on a raid backpack. The $80,000 makes a big difference, especially with the space. Because every square of space that you lose, getting a smaller backpack is another square which could be possibly making... 10 to 20,000 more rubles, which is a lot of rubles when you add up the fact that this 80,000 backpack could come out with a million dollars worth of rubles. So I already have a backpack, so I'll just take it out here and use this for the money run. So now we got our two things, 6B3 TM and the backpack. Now you might also want to think, well, what gun should I use? Um, Usually when you're doing a money run, you also want to use a suppressed gun because if you do run into trouble, whether it be a scab or a player, you want the fight to be quick and you also want it to be very quiet so nobody knows you were there if you have a fight or a scuffle and wherever you're getting loot everyone's gonna know you're there immediately so sometimes you can buy this mp5 which from peacekeeper is around i'd say i think i haven't memorized correctly 440 
uh, US, which is a pretty good price. It's like a little more than 50K, 55K rubles. And that's pretty good for a weapon that already comes suppressed and has very low recoil. And then you can add whatever sight you want to it or a laser. Uh, some other good guns that are good budget options are a hunter with a suppressor. So you could buy uh, the suppressor from Skier, the barter trade. If you do have the barter trade unlocked, it's one Nixer camera and one W battery, which is 25 to 35K, which is pretty good for a suppressor, especially with a hunter. And hunter can use some devastating rounds if you have M62 unlocked from Peacekeeper. If not, you can always just use the regular M80. That's completely fine as well. Or you could even go as far as to buy M61 on the market. But whatever gun you wanna use is purely up to preference depending on how confident you are in recoil control and aim so you know hunter's obviously going to have much more devastating power and effects but you got to hit your shots in the chest and head you always got to be very accurate with that weapon while the mp5 if you put like let's say a leg meta in it you can just spray at the legs or you can put mediocre ammo uh like if you don't have a lot of ammo unlocked ap 6.3 is an okay bet and you can drop people quitty uh pretty quickly by just destroying their armor so okay everyone and now that we're geared up with our earpiece. This is a headset. You usually wanna bring this so you can hear people. Your gun to defend yourself. Your 6B3 TM, which is optional. You can use whatever armor rig you want. And your big backpack. Now we're all set and ready to go. I'm actually going to go in an offline raid, an interchange, not because I'm fearful there is going to be any contestion because where we would be going in interchange, there won't be any anyway. But I just want to give you guys a very clear image of what you should be doing in the match, you know, just without any interference, just in case. But my viewers can vouch for me on this. There are no contestion in these areas. So you wanna go interchange, and you usually wanna select the nighttime if there is one. If there's not, you can go do whatever run you normally do, or go PvP, go do whatever you usually do in the game, or maybe go do a quest. Um, but sometimes it's okay to not go at night. It depends on how confident you are in yourself and your play style and how quick you move. Um, in daytime, it's way easier to get killed because people are more likely to see you. And uh, especially inside, the darker areas are really just sunken in with just complete and utter shadows. Um, so it's it's very hard to spot you in certain areas when it's nighttime. Uh, so that's why you wanna prioritize going. But you can go daytime if you want. Okay, everyone. Unfortunately, I had to turn down the game audio because it's raining. So I cannot control, you know, the weather of Tarkov or the time of Tarkov. So unfortunately, you know, the video is going to take place during this. But keep in mind that everything is relatively the same um, when you're doing these runs, whether it be raining, nighttime, daytime. Uh, you're just going to have to uh, kind of shift your play style accordingly. So, you know, of course, when it's raining, you're not going to be able to hear um, things as easily. You know, gunshots, scavs, players. So you're going to be a little less aware of things. So you're just going to want to stay extra vigilant. So this door is Ollie right here up this uh, escalator and or staircases. You go up there and there's Ollie. But I kind of want to show you the outside for a minute so you know what it looks like. So if you're spawning anywhere along this road facing the building, Ollie is always going to be on the right hand most side with the blue and yellow painted walls. Um, and all the way in the other side of the map is Idea. So in Ollie, um, you either have to go around and go through that little entrance way I showed you, or you can go over here, and if you have a suppressed weapon, you can break the glass and walk through. So now when you go up right on the staircase, here's Ollie, as I said before, on the right-hand side. Now, Ollie can have some scabs at the front. Um, you usually wanna be wary of those. They usually have it in the front area right here, actually, and kind of in the middle, but they're not very troublesome. You know, you just stay very hidden, tap them with your suppressed weapon, and you'll be on your way. Just make sure to get them before they get you. Do not be hesitant of shooting the scab or wasting ammo on the scab because the second they shoot you, everybody is going to know you're here. And the objective is to avoid trouble. So when you're in here, you want to look on the shelves, um, whether it be the large shelves or the very small metal shelves. Um, loot can even be on the floor uh, next to these shelves. So that's usually where uh, all the loot is centered around. It can be in even some wild places, so in places you cannot actually reach, there can be items, and if you have a teammate, you can jump on their head and have you boost them up, but um, majority of the items are in places that you can reach. So there, there's a corrugated hose right there, and these wooden shelves are also a pretty good place to look. You can look on the first part or the top part, and there can be some items. 
So a water filter, that's a very good item, depending on when it, you are on the wipe. It could be 90K, it could be 140K, it can cost a lot. Metal fuel tanks also cost a lot, usually in the 100,000 ruble area. So uh, when you're doing these runs, you kind of want to look at every single item and just kind of uh, look at the price of all of them. And once you memorize all the prices completely, you'll know what to pick up and what to keep. But um, usually if you bring a big raid backpack like this, you're not really going to be leaving much behind. But in this video, um, I'll kind of show you what's usually worth uh, more than other things. But again, this is subject to change. You have to take all of this with a grain of salt because all this could change. Ollie could one day become a more contested area. Uh, certain loot could one day be worth more than others. It all depends. So I would say go research and go look at a lot of these uh, yourself. And experience is the best teacher. So the more you do these runs, the more you'll be able to memorize the prices of a lot of these things. And uh, you'll get used to doing the runs efficiently, quickly. And, you know, you'll be making rubles at a very steady pace. Um, I'd say for me, once I had mastered uh, doing these loot runs and I felt more confident and was actually running around all instead of walking, but I suggest you walk because it's a lot more safe and a lot of pe people are uh, less likely to hear you and you're able to be more vigilant and have more, um, just more perception of everything around you, be more aware. Uh, but yeah, once you are confident enough to move quickly um, in a way that suits you best, you can start making rubles at 1 million to 2 million uh, every 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, I'd say that's a very steady pace. Um, it's better than most things. It may not be better than reserve. Reserve does have about uh, equal amounts of loot than this, but I feel like reserve is definitely a lot more contested and uh, the loot is in very specific places. Um, people can say what they want about which map is the best to make money on, but personally, for me, I say it's interchange just because of so many places that are very uh, uncontested and just left to loot. A lot of people usually have their sights set on the Medlocker and Killa, Kiba, uh, all sorts of things like that. The tech stores. Um, you can actually do these raids without any weapons as well if you're really confident that you won't run into anybody. But I say to bring a weapon always just in case and sometimes you can get swarmed by scads as well. You never know. This isn't me recording over and over on offline runs, just picking the best run, you know? I'm doing commentary here while doing this, and this would be very, very, very tiresome to say all these things over and over and over again. That's why I'm making sure. I'm getting it right the first time, and hopefully telling you guys what you need to do, and not, uh, not overemphasizing everything and going way too into detail. Hey, ladies and gents, editing Five Fox here. I'm just going to speed up the process of me looting Ollie just to speed the video along a bit. Enjoy.
Okay, everyone. Ladies and gents, the reason I've come back over here and I have stopped the process of uh, speeding up all the loot is because I forgot to show you this area and I forgot to tell you a few key things. Um, this area right back here um, where the lockers are, if you look inside the lockers, there can be bitcoins, gold chains, chainlets, things like that. And if you look behind these kiosk desks, there can sometimes be items uh, along these desks uh, right here by the monitor. There's also computers to loot. Um, I would suggest always looting computers because CPU fans um, are pretty good. Capacitors are okay. Wires are also okay to find. Um, and you can even have a rare chance to find graphics cards in there. I know. Crazy, right? It's not a very high chance, but it's always worth searching through every last computer that's in the store. And also, now that we're full, uh, time to talk a little bit about the backpack as well. So, now that you've filled up your backpack, depending on how back big your backpack is, if you filled your backpack before the 10 minute marks um, in the raid, keep in mind that you could get the not found uh, in raid status, the ran through status on your character, which means all these items you picked up will not be found in raid and they will immediately, every single item in your backpack will lose most of its value. So you wanna make sure to keep all of this found in raid. So if you have a very small backpack, like let's say you brought a mechanism instead, or maybe even a pilgrim got filled up too quickly, uh, you either want to wait till the 10 minute mark or look at how many scavs you've killed. If you've looted and killed uh, two to three scavs, then you should be all right to leave. Um, in addition to the looting XP that you get from searching all these computers and looting all these items, you could have uh, enough. So always just make sure that you've either spent enough time or got enough XP. And now that our backpack is full, it's also time to tell you about a few items you should drop. USB A's are usually not worth it. It's usually 5,000 to 8,000, sometimes even lower than that. Uh, so these are not really worth keeping. Random bits of attachments you find are also not usually worth keeping. Um, some of them can be expensive, although most of them are not. WD-40 is also not worth keeping for sure. It's only 4,500 and T-plugs for sure as well, which is only 3,000. What you want to do is you want to look at a lot of items you find as well. And depending on what time of the wipe it is, um, things like propane tanks and motors may not actually be that expensive and may not be worth keeping. Because remember, certain items, like let's say to look at the Pokram, for example, which is usually a uh, sturdy 12K uh, around that mark. And it's it's very, very, very reliable to pick up because it's it's always usually 12K on the market. Um, look at this compared to like motors. So let's say you find a bunch of pox ram and you have a motor. Should you drop the motor for the pox ram? And to your head, you know, this may seem like a very dumb question. Of course I shouldn't drop it. The motor is usually worth 30 to 40k. Why would I drop the motor? Well, if you have four pox ram, it could possibly be more than the motor or more than the propane, depending on the prices. Um, and to a lot of players, they're hearing what I'm saying. They're like, well, that's just common sense. Remember, I'm trying to teach you guys everything. So there are some people in here who may not look at every item's value in that way and only looks at the total value of the item, not how much space it takes up. But all of that uh, affects how much money you made. So keep that in mind. Now that our backpack's basically full and I've shown you where all the computers and all the loot can be, uh, now you want to press O and check your extract. If you have Emercom checkpoint, I'm going to show you how to get to that from Ollie first. So we're going to pass by this back area that we did earlier and uh, run all the way along the back here. It's nice to stay along the back of the store because the front of the store, sometimes people pass by and they see you um, from down the hall and they see you from far away or maybe you run into scavs. Uh, it's always more safe at the back of the store as well as it being more dark. As you can see, this night is fine. Uh, the match has turn finally turned to night. So, you know, it's pretty dark in this area and it's going to be kind of hard to spot, them, spot you depending on what backpack you have on. Um, another thing is, I definitely forgot to tell you, which I should have mentioned, is that your backpack will usually make you overweight, and depending on what strength and endurance level you have, this can heavily affect your movement and completely encumber you. Now, in a fight and you have no stamina, you know you're basically screwed, you can't run to cover. So it is very ideal that you buy an SJ6 or a mule stim on the market to use to uh, keep yourself from uh, always being encumbered and tired and not being able to pick up anything. I mean, it'll really affect you heavily if you're overweight, trust me.
So now that we've gone out the back here, there's usually a couple scabs around here that you want to be careful of. Uh, sometimes they're already killed uh, by the end of the raid, but you know, sometimes you can run into them. Um, you also want to be players uh, careful of players camping this railing up here. They can be on top of right there, sniping you for a shooter boy in heaven. Um, usually what you want to do is when you come up on this ramp, you want to jump off onto this. And you want to jump down onto this tank so you don't take any fall damage. And then just fall down again. And you want to stay on the right hand side here where all the foliage and trees are. So you can escape the line of sight of your enemies. Because if your enemy gets a clear shot on you with a high powered gun, like any sort of DMR or sniper, you're not even going to have a chance to fight back. So don't give them that opportunity. Um, make sure that the Mule Stim or SJ6 is keeping you with enough stamina so that you don't have to really stop too often. Because the more you stop and walk, the easier it is for them to headshot you. Uh, you also want to probably move side to side, use some techniques, and when you get close to the uh, extract here, you either want to sit behind the truck, so right here you can extract from right here, or sometimes if your strength level is high enough, you can jump onto the tire of this truck while overweight, and then up again. Sorry, my bad. Like that, and then you can just prone, and you're safe from most snipers. Um, you can also kind of just sit in between the barrier and the truck right here, although I wouldn't suggest it because sometimes people hide in the tents or hide behind the car. So I'd say by, uh, underneath, behind the truck, good. Inside the truck, good. And sometimes you can even just stay on the side of the truck right here if you're confident that there's no snipers over by the railing. Okay, everyone, and now that we're back inside of Ollie, right in the smack dab center, um, I'm going to show you how to get to Railway from here. So Railway is on the opposite end of Emercom. So the way you just took to get to Emercom, you want to use the same way to get to Railway. You just want to stay near the back of the store or the middle of the store. And then uh, when you get to the other end of the store, right here, you can um, either go through this um, little entranceway here where the computer and the kiosk desks are. And you can go right down here. Um, you can jump on top of these boxes if your strength level isn't high. Jump over the glass just to keep you from running around that metal plate and people shooting you from um, the furniture store over here, catching you off guard. You can run down here, and if you really want to get a quick escape without going all the way around through the garage, again, get the glass with your suppressed weapon, run through, and uh, usually most players can't jump over the fence, so you can just go around on the right side here. Um, it is a usually nice place to wait for stamina as well as uh, if you need stamina by this bus and sign. Um, especially, again, when you're overweight, you're going to lose stamina really quickly. Okay, and now that you reach the grassy knoll right next to the highway, you just want to continue along the grassy knoll. Uh, make sure to stay with uh, the tree bark, the cars, the various rocks, and the ditches. You want to stay by a lot of cover because people usually try to stay up there by that ultra and try to snipe you for shooter born in heaven. And there could also be some creepy crawlies along the hallway. Highway. You never know. Um, usually when you come to this area, you want to either jump over this wall right here or you want to just go through this crevice if you don't have enough stamina to jump and you can rest right here um, to get some stamina there's a nice little ditch right here to wait for stamina in um, you can either choose to stay still or stamina or you can take off your backpack and walk around um, I would say taking off the backpack and walking around is a more safer method because you never know who has a line of sight in your head when you're running to whale railway, railway is sometimes even a better extract because if you're not full of loot, or maybe you just want to get some more goodies, you can search the stashes while you're waiting for stamina on your way to railway. So I'm going to be showing you guys where all the stashes are right now.
Okay, guys. And now that I'm at the last stash looting it, um, two things I'm going to tell you is I did leave one or two stashes behind. Um, but those are stashes that you kind of have to go out of your way for and they're not directly toward the extract. And also, when you're looting stashes, it is a lot harder if your backpack is full to tell what is worth it or not. Because stashes can have almost any item in all of Tarkov now since the buff. So, you know, if you don't really know the universal prices for a lot of the items in Tarkov, um, I would say don't worry about it too much and don't risk dropping anything expensive. If you want to drop one or two low profile items like capacitors or wires like I just did for whatever uh, is in the stash, then go ahead. But I would not risk dropping anything of high value. Okay, everyone, and now we're going to move on to an actual recording of me selling things from one of these runs get more out of the raid. So I'm going to keep these fuels, but we're going to still add them to like the total money count. I don't even think I have space for all the fuels actually. Okay, never mind. I'll just sell the fuels just so you guys can get an example of uh, how much I would have made anyway. Whatever. Because I don't have the space for them. So you can press this little button at the top that says auto select similar and it'll select every single item that is exactly like this item on the market. Um, which is really useful, but just make sure that you don't need anything found in raids. Like, let's say you need kept tape found in raid or corrugated hoses found in raid for a uh, quest for a dealer. Or maybe a barter trade. It will select those, the other ones you have in your inventory as well if they're not in a container. So I have, if I have corrugated hose and let's say my lucky scab jump box and I click auto select similar on these, it's, it won't select any in my scab jump box. So you don't have to worry about that. So as long as you have whatever items you want to keep already in like a rig or a box or some other container, it will not select it. So you can keep that in mind. So I'm gonna wait before I collect all of this so I can show you how much you would have made in total. So you just take the amount I had beforehand and then add it to the amount I'm collecting off this. And remember, there's also the, the cost of insurance. Um, sorry, not insurance, I'm an idiot, the fee. Um, so always keep that in mind as well. The fee can be sometimes high, sometimes low, depending on what item you're selling, the rarity of the item, um, how much of it you're selling, how much you're selling it for. Uh, it can depend on like a lot of many different factors as well as what level your intelligence center is, but it's usually not anything compared to the actual like money you're getting out of the item. So you see these tubes, these tubes, if he's only 2,000, yet I'll be getting about like 25,000 from them. And uh, what I'm doing here, by the way, if, I don't know if you've like caught on or noticed yet, but you usually want to undercut people like by the dollar and see if there's gaps. So if the, if the first offer that's listed is a lot lower than the original offer, uh, you're probably just going to want to um, put it in between the two. Or uh, what you usually want to do is if there isn't like a gap between the two or a large gap, just put it a dollar below the starting price. So you don't have to put it exactly one ruble, but you can put it like pretty low. So you just don't want a big gap between the two. Like you see this right here, I'm not going to put mine up for 25,000 because this is 28. Now I'm going to put it for 27,999 because I want to get every dime out of, uh, out of the raid. So um, what you saw me just do, you can do this in a lot of other places on interchange and reserve and customs if you know where the loot is. So in customs, the big fortress building, the very, very huge warehouse with the grenade turrets and the regular uh, assault turrets, that has a lot of loot in it. You can loot that as well. But keep in mind, those, vo those items won't be as high as the value as these ones, especially early in the wipe. If you're early in the wipe on Tarkov, um, items that you find in Ollie are high demand items because they're items you need for the hideout so they're, they're really going to be just popping off in demand and it, it it can go to some wild prices so you have to keep that in mind depending on what point in the wipe it is can decide what map you should go on so go and look at some videos of where the loot is on interchange where the loot is on customs where the loot is on reserve and you can do the exact same run you see me doing here on other maps but the reason the main reason i do it on interchange is because there's so little contestion and so much things in other places that people don't really go to the areas like Ollie and Idea because they have more pressing matters. They gotta go kill Killa or they're gonna go to the Medlock or the tech stores. They're gonna go to other places that either have more value items or maybe something that has a quest or maybe there's action there. Like a lot of people don't usually go to uh, 
Ollie or Idea. All right, everyone. Now I'm going to show you what I made from three very quick uh, money runs that I did in a list, little less than an hour. Um, right here is a bunch of junk that I didn't sell. And we're going to go ahead and add another mill for a lot of things that I uh, didn't sell because I wanted to keep. And, you know, also stuff that I sold to the dealer instead. And we're going to go ahead here and collect everything. There's a few stuff uh, that's just waiting to sell that I found. Uh, that also can't sell, so you can include that if you want to, but I'd say add another 1.2 mil. Um, and that's me being generous, I mean, probably could have made more. But let's see how much we made. Alright. I mean, uh, it's a decent amount of money, and I mean, in a little less than an hour, I mean, that's, that's pretty good. I mean, if you dedicate an evening to it, and do this for a couple of hours and hours, I mean, you'll never need money again. Um, now when it comes to spending money in Tarkov, you always want to be uh, like smart about your decisions when it comes to investing in your character. I've said this to almost every single viewer who has asked me for like good financial advice on Tarkov. And I would say treat your character as you would a business. You know, you're going to invest money into the business and you're going to try as hard as you can to make that business successful as an entrepreneur. But when you're investing money in your tar uh, character in Tarkov, it's a little bit different because spending money does not automatically increase your chances by a tenfold amount. If I spend an extra 100,000 rubles on a like a way better vest on my character, think about how much or how often that would really save you and is it really worth buying? Those are the decisions you have to make in Tarkov. Just because you spend more money on your character doesn't mean that a raid is going to be foolproof. It entirely depends on how you play and nothing more. You can go into a raid with 50,000 rubles and make just as much money as somebody who invested 500,000 rubles going into the raid. It is a very, very, very different process with how those two people play though. And that's the thing you have to keep in mind. How much money are you willing to spend and how comfortable are you with spending money? This isn't me trying to incentivize things like gear fear and you playing like a rat, I say and play Tarkov however you want to. Enjoy the game however you want to. But if you really want to be efficient in this game, I would say never spend too much on a vest. Uh, armors and armored rigs are not really going to save you as often as you think. The difference between a level 4 and a level 5 armor is definitely big enough to be worth paying the 70k. But it all depends on how you play. And since I like to play aggressive, it doesn't really make a big, a super big difference for me. And it also kind of doesn't make a big difference if you're playing as a rat because you're not going to run into much people. Now, there's nothing wrong with playing like a rat. It's just that when you have enough money in Tarkov, there's no use in doing these money runs anymore. Once you have uh, any large sum of money, you should just focus on playing the game how you want to play and how you enjoy it. And you know what? If you, make, uh, if you have enjoyment off of making endless amounts of money in Tarkov, then, you know, that's you. But I would say you can do just as good with really cheap things as you would really expensive things. Um, those are my tips, guys. Sorry, I'm not like an expert on Tarkov or anything, and my vocabulary is not very expensive, and there's not really an in-depth way how I can tell you guys this. And also, I suck at speaking. But you get the gist of everything I'm saying, and hopefully anything I've said today has helped you, even though the video was exceedingly longer than it was supposed to be. Have a wonderful day out there, guys, and peace out.